Hello everyone, I am Dweather Dew. Welcome back. And today we're going to be talking about a potential tropical storm forming either in the Caribbean or in the Gulf of Mexico. Before we get started, uh, I did update my website in case you guys didn't know, so be sure to check that out in the description. Also, my shorts channel in the description as well. I have started to upload a few like little short weather clips on my main channel so you guys can notice the shorts channel if you ever go check it out. But I am also uploading a few short clips on my main channel as well. So getting started today, potential tropical storm Bill. Remember, we already had our A name storm earlier in May. So here is the satellite imagery right now. And as you can see, there is a there is a big low pressure system over the southern United States, which is what's keeping these the southern plains, or especially the southeast, I should say, pretty stormy. Now, this is current satellite imagery. So of course you're not gonna really see anything yet because when we're talking about development, we're not talking like in a short term, we're talking like, I would say midterm, we're talking, right? So maybe like a week or so out, maybe maybe a week and a half out. So it's not too far out. It's close enough to where we need to start, you know, preparing for it, right? So you can see in the Caribbean, there are some thunderstorms developing, but they're not really moving east to west. They don't look, ro they don't look like they're rotating. There is a robust tropical wave off the coast of Africa, but that is, um, that's, we don't really see activity forming out there this time of year because, again, of shear and dry air. So looking at the models, all right, looking at the GFS models and what the models are really pointing out here, you can see that as we head through time, something could form in the Pacific. Now we have seen something like that. I don't, I can't remember if it was last year, but we have seen where storms from the Pacific can cross over and become Atlantic named storms. We've seen that before and that could happen, right? You see, we, what, this is what's called a uh, Central American gyre, where we just see like a big rotating area of convection just and, and storms tropical storms can can like fire off off of that they can like develop off of that right so here is the storm you can see moving south to north through the gulf of mexico and this thunderstorm activity that you see right here it's not too organized but you can see we have a low pressure system and this thunderstorm activity could become our tropical storm our name storm bill as we head through potentially middle next week Look at the thunderstorm activity. It starts to get a bit more circular, right? It is a bit elongated, but we do see that sometimes. It could be subtropical. It could be tropical. But there is definitely plenty of convection, as you can see on the, on the top of the scale there. There's definitely plenty of convection, and we could see potentially a tropical storm bill by the middle of the week, according to the GFS model. And here we have the surface winds for that, and you can see... Watch as it moves south to north. Look, there's your low pressure and there's your green indicating tropical storm force winds are forecast as of now according to the GFS model. Then the low continues to move through the Gulf of Mexico. You see some greens, even some lighter yellow. So that's like maybe around 50 mile an hour winds, right? And there's your high pressure steering the low this way. So we are seeing some, you know, some steering that could help uh, better predict this forecast, right? And you can see the the onshore flow continues even through early Friday. So maybe the low stalls out, even though it's kind of disappeared. Maybe the low stalls out. This could be a slow moving system. Again, it's a bit far out, but it, it might not even be this up. Something could happen before this, but this is definitely one of the uh, formation possibilities that we're talking about here with the GFS model. Now, the wind shear in the Caribbean through the next, let's say through the 14th, like 9th through the 14th, the shear does look like below average for the Caribbean, but maybe above average for the Gulf of Mexico. And we're early in the hurricane season. So if we do see above average wind shear, that could mean that things don't look too great. Because if we saw above average shear in the middle of the hurricane season, when it's typically pretty low, it might not be as much of a big deal, if that makes sense. But if we look right around where that storm was forecast to move through the Gulf of Mexico, we start to see this area of below average or even average wind shear that could protect the system, right? The system could be forming right in this region right here. So maybe it could be protected. But above average shear is forecast right now, and now it obviously helps to limit development. Now here's a Canadian model. All right. Now again, here is like our kind of like our our Central American gyre, right? Or like a big cluster of convection just right over Mexico and Central America, right? And you can see, and something might form off of that. And then look at this. This is a much more organized, and this is a much bigger system. I would say it is more spread out for sure. I mean, it pretty much covers the entire. Bay of Campeche or the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. All right, and this is through mid next week. Pretty much same timing as the GFS model, right? This is like our our middle, not middle of this week coming up, but the week after that. 
All right, so we're talking again, 16th, 17th, 18th of June potentially, right? And if we look at the sustained wind speeds for that, right? A lot of dark blue, you can even see some greens. Uh, that does indicate tropical storm force winds. But again, it's a little bit less organized looking, but this can definitely change um, model run to model run. Look at the pressure, 997. That is definitely uh, what we can see for tropical storm force winds. That is definitely what we can um, expect. When pressure gets that low, usually that represents a kind of like a weak to medium strength tropical storm. And and notice how large, just notice how large the wind field is too, by the way. Right? I mean, it's pretty much the western half Gulf of Mexico is within that wind field. It's not a very strong wind field, but it is a it is a decently sized wind field nonetheless that could be a tropical storm by middle of the week after this one coming up. So looking at the wind shear, now the only difference with this model is that they predict a bit more wind shear, which is probably, oops, sorry about that, which is probably why they uh, had the, in their radar simulation or the convection simulation, they had a little bit more disorganized was because of the higher shear. But again, we have seen subtropical systems develop. It could happen again because it's become subtropical. Um, the only model that really hasn't pointed out anything out too much is the European model. Um, now, they do forecast something right there. Same thing with what the GFS and the GEM were both saying. But by June 16th in the morning, the, the only difference is the Canadian had the storm out in the ocean already. The European model still has it down there. So if we were, if this could actually extend farther, uh, this is as far out as it goes. It only goes out 10 days. But if I were to extend this farther, I think the European would have brought this into the Gulf of Mexico. But I can't say that 100% for sure because this is the last frame. But the European is showing the same thing as the Euro and GEM have been saying. So maybe, or excuse me, the GFS and the GEM were both saying this. So maybe the European model is in line with the other two. I just can't tell you for sure because this is the last frame. All right, and moving on to the kind of like the conditions, right? Do we really have, like, we know what the models are saying now, but are conditions really favorable? Are the models, like, giving a reasonable uh, prediction? All right, sea surface temperatures, Gulf of Mexico, the northern Gulf of Mexico, we're seeing average water temperatures, but the southern half of the Gulf, as well as the Caribbean, where the storm could originate from, above average sea surface temperatures. So I would definitely check that off. Um, tropical intensity index, this just tells us, like, how conditions are. Now, this is how conditions are right now. Like the favorability of conditions could always change uh, very quickly. But look, right around where the storm could form off of, right? If it comes off of this direction right here, it's moving into highly favorable waters. Um, anywhere orange and red, that's where your check marks are. Greens and yellows, not necessarily. All right, but again, these could change. Again, this is just how conditions are looking right now, but already very favorable conditions right around the Mexico, Central American area. And that's where the storm can move off of into the southwest corner of the Gulf of Mexico into those favorable uh, conditions. All right. Dry air. Really don't see much of it, honestly, except for out in the east tropical Atlantic. When we're talking about where the storm could end up, there's really not much shear at all, or excuse me, dry air in the central and eastern Gulf of Mexico and even really not the northern Caribbean. The southern Caribbean has a little bit, but it's very light and it's not as intense. All right, but the Gulf of Mexico, except for the nor except for the northwest corner, there's nothing really. So really, no dry air to be had as for right now. So dry air, I could check off as well. All right, now we went over sea surface temperatures. Now it's just the surface. Not only do the sea surface temperatures matter, but it also matters what's going on beneath the ocean surface, right? Because the energy that fuels the tropical systems comes from deep below the ocean surface, not just the, the sea surface temperatures. Don't really paint the full picture here. So the tropical cyclone heat potential kind of does. And in the Caribbean, we do have a lot. I would say we're in that uh, probably like moderate zone, maybe a couple specks of orange that could be closer to high, like over here. But most of the Northern Caribbean region is in that high end of low, kind of like moderate region of that tropical cyclonic heat. Uh, and that's starting to make its way into the Gulf of Mexico uh, via the Gulf Stream. Now we still are seeing some low tropical cyclonic heat but the sea surface temperatures are pretty warm in this part of the Gulf of Mexico as well. So that kind of balances out a little bit. But tropical cyclonic heat is still very important. So I wouldn't really, I would give it like a half a check mark I would, I, in terms of this category. Um, this isn't like a make or break, like shear and dryer are for developing tropical systems. This isn't a make or break, but it's very important still. Um, I would give this one a half a check mark. And then looking at this, this is telling us based on a combination of several models, as you can see up there, the GEM, the European. Uh, many more. This tells us like the the chance of, of tropical cyclone genesis. And you can see through the next 
five, even plus days that orange zone, that's like your medium development zone, medium chance of development, I should say. All right, right, kind of like by Mexico, right up the coast of Mexico, right? 40 to 50% chance of development. All right, so this is something to keep our eyes on for sure. Uh, if we go to the actual sea surface temperatures, I can actually pull that up really quick. So we saw here how far the sea surface temperatures were from average, but now we can see the actual sea surface temperatures. And they're honestly pretty warm. Um, I can't say it's abnormal for sea surface temperatures to be in the 80s by the start of hurricane season. I think that's pretty normal. But sea surface temperatures are above average. As we head towards the southern corner of the Gulf of Mexico, if this storm emerges off of here, like this could be a really, this could be a big problem because sea surface temperatures in this region are 84 to 86. I'm picking up 84 in this one zone right here. I'm picking up 85 over here. All right, so... That is, that is very warm water. That's like more than enough to develop a tropical system. And then closer to Cuba, uh, we could be picking up closer to 85, 86. All right, but definitely plenty warm up. Even the northern edges of the Gulf of Mexico are pretty much sitting right on 80, maybe 79. So the sea surface temperatures are, are pretty good. They're lining up pretty nicely. And then on the Pacific side of things, we're almost 90. Like that's like almost bath water over there. All right, so this is something to keep our eyes on. Definitely want to stay tuned for updates. I am The Weather Dude signing off. Till next time, I'll catch you guys in the next video.